Okey, bertemu kembali dalam YouTube channel saya berkenaan dengan tajuk Basic Requirement for Analysis for Chapter 4C. Alright, today you will learn about dry ashing and wet ashing. So, there is a sample preparation and resolution. So, first the digestion or mineralization of a sample to render it soluble and to destroy organic matter that may interfere with the recovery of the analyte. So, there is a two technique of sample resolution technique. So, first is dry ashing, which is required or combusted at high, very high temperature. So, normally the temperature reaches between 400 to 700 degrees Celsius. It's very high. And then the second one is a wet ashing. So, required the combination of the strong acid, such as you have a sulfuric acid and also nitric acid. Right? So, this one is for sample preparation. You have the sample, the tapi sample is bentuk solid. Tapi macam mana kita nak run this analysis? So it's quite hard actually nak bawa masuk dalam instrument high tech instrument. So what you should do is you need to do uh, a dissolution. So you kena jadikan dalam bentuk solution, ia akan jadi lebih mudah. So when we deal with the aging, so maksudnya kita akan jadikan you punya sample sebagai abu. Nama sebenarnya you bukan abu bin Ahmad, bukan tapi adalah abu. Okay? Yang bila you bakar sampah for example, dia akan hasilkan abu. Right. So next is we proceed to dry ashing. This is the three steps. Uh, I mean the three pictures that uh, show the dry ashing punya start process. So this is the muffle furnace yang kita guna pakai. So dia diperbuat daripada clay. Eh. Dalam ni warna putih ni ada ada diperbuat daripada clay. So dia sangat tahan. So boleh bakar sampel uh, boleh tahan sampai sampai empat ratus hingga tujuh ratus derajat Celsius. Okay, and then normally the samples we will place in the crucible. So then slow kita tutup, kita buat lah dia punya temperature berapa kita nak guna pakai. So kembasa in muffle furnace, so between 400 to 700 degrees Celsius. And then but we need to add some of magnesium nitrate. So sebagai ashing aid, apa function ashing aid ni adalah untuk lowerkan temperature, ashing temperature between 450 to 550 degrees Celsius only because dia akan mengurangkan penggunaan bil elektrik awak lah kalau ya, dekat dia punya tempat atau laboratory awak and then bila dah tu charring the sample prior to muffling is preferred charring is accomplished by heating sample in the crucible in open flame and then uh, masa kita tengah bakar ni kita akan serve the oxygen which is oxygen so that is organic matter is burn off leaving behind you know organic residue that is soluble in dilute acid so dry ashing often used to remove organic substance from interfering with the analyte so sometimes pada kita punya sample tu kita ada organic matter yang lain so kita nak organic matter tu sebab dia akan mengganggu kita punya um, maklumat kita nak cari at the end of the analysis so kita nak dapat yang yeah, something yang lagi bagus kan so for example you have uh, the sample you jumpa sample uh, tempat orang meninggal so, ada banyak orang kena potong orang kena bunuh kena bunuh dan kena potong so banyak jari-jari-jari so kita nak tengok jari ni milik siapa jari ni milik siapa so kita bawa jari tu masuk pada sample dry ashing kita akan bakar dia sampai jadi abu so from that abu so kita akan dilute kan menggunakan uh, diluted acid so from there kita akan bawa dalam lab guna high tech instrument untuk determine dah de detect dia punya uh, DNA and so on for further analysis lah ok so dry etching is very uh, favorite question for final exam so if you can see um, apa soalan yang selalu tanya adalah the step involved so you need to know eh, yang saya highlight kan and saya uh, gariskan ni semuanya penting ok so we proceed to next one is a dry etching if the sample, oh sorry, uh, if the sample are liquid and wet tissue, the sample are dry on a stream bath or by gentle heat before they are placed in muffle furnace. Yet the heat from the furnace should be applied gradually up to full temperature to prevent rapid combustion and foaming. After dry aging is complete, the residue is usually leached from the vessel with a 1 or 2 milliliter concentrated 6 molar hyaluronic acid and transferred to a flask or beaker for further treatment. So this one for, untuk yang sample kita kena gradually increase the temperature because dia akan kalau kita bagi direct 700 degrees Celsius contohnya dia akan burn keseluruhan so organic matter yang kita nak sorry 
inorganic residue yang kita nak tak dapat ok so next we proceed to wet ashing so dilution, dissolution technique juga so usually use the combination of acid between as I said tadi sulfuric acid and nitric acid perform in kejedal flask uh, ni kejedal flask eh? bukan kejadah flask right and boil of the acid and white fume evolve so this white fume evolve normally is a SO3 gas so very dangerous gas very toxic gas so tak boleh kita tak boleh simply nak buat this experiment pada open air ataupun dekat lab meja lab bench lab tu so you need to do all the experiment in the fume hood alright so wet digestion or ashing this is the principle of wet ashing usually use combination of acid to achieve a complete dissolution as I said tadi nitric acid and sulfuric acid and normally sulfuric acid amount is less compared to nitric acid and normally kita guna pakai in the ratio 1 ratio 3 okay, meaning that 1 is refer to sulfuric acid 3 is refer to nitric acid as I said, perform in kejedal flask. This is kejedal flask. And then nitric acid destroy the bark organic matter, but it does not get hot enough to destroy the last traces. So required boiling during the digestion process until sulfuric acid remain and dense, produce the SO3 fumes, begin to reflux in the flask. Okay, at this point, the solution gets very hot, so you need to be extra careful. Uh, extract care people will menggunakan instrument tersebut and then at last remaining organic material so wet digestion if the organic matter persists more nitric acid may be added digestion is continued until the solution is clear all digestion procedure must be performed in a fume hood as I said tadi lah so dia akan evolve the SO3 gas yang sangat bahaya alright <coughs> This is the advantage and disadvantage of dry ashing. So for dry ashing, advantages dia adalah simplicity. Bukan produk simplicity daripada Datuk Sri Nuriza, bukan. Tapi this is simplicity, maksudnya mudah nak dimulai pakai. So if let's say you have the sample yang you ada tu, contoh jari, you masuk dalam crucible, you wake lah the sample tu and then terus masuk dalam you punya muffle furnace. And then pilihlah suhu mana yang you minat. Alright, free from contamination since few or no reagent be added. Okay, so as I mentioned, kita ada add apa apa solution semasa buat uh, experiment tersebut. The ability to decompose large sample size. So you tengok tadi kan, dia punya size tu itu yang lab scale punya size. Eh? If let's say for the yang terlibat dalam indas dalam forensik punya department, dia ada muffle furnace yang besar. So mungkin satu orang manusia boleh masuk dalam tu lah kot untuk bakar terus ha, ok so the technique is relatively, relatively safe even dia guna pakai temperature yang tinggi tapi uh, ada sekejap lagi saya terang the technique tends itself to mass production so dia akan hasilkan mass production kita senang nak collect and so on but uh, this is a main main punya product uh, instrument so biasalah akan ada disadvantages so first is loses due to rotation to the ashing container loses due to volatilization 2 to 4 hours are needed for dry ashing this one kita bawa burn dia saja kita nak bakar dia 2 hingga 4 jam belum tunggu dia sampai sejuk lagi sejuk nak dapat sampel dia sehingga sejuk mungkin keesokan hari baru dia completely sejuk so, baru dia boleh guna ambil sampel awak tu and then contamination from the muffle furnace contamination from the muffle furnace ni and the ashing container ni normally bila orang uh, guna pakai orang sebelum tu guna pakai contoh dia, dia dia nak detect dia punya amount of omega 3 in uh, ikan keli contohnya lepas tu patutnya lepas habis guna dah ambil sampel semua dia open tu patutnya dia collect semua dia bersihkan dia basuh semua kawasan tu tapi dia tak bersihkan so akan berlaku lah contamination so for the next person pula yang jenis yang tak ambil pot benda ni, terus guna pakai sahaja that muffle furnace akan rosak lah eh. dia punya sampel tu akan dapat berbeza data yang dia dapat pun berbeza there is a physical loss of low density ashes when the muffle door is open so ni mungkin akan bakar tapi terbuka sikit dia punya pintu masuk lah, ada contamination dari luar ok, 
Okay, so meanwhile for wet etching, um, advantages is superior in terms of rapidity. So sangat bagus. Okay, cepat. Low level of temperature maintain. So tak perlu temperature yang tinggi sangat. Freedom from loss by retention. Disadvantages, introduction of impurities from the reagent necessary for the reaction. So difficulty in dissolving certain metal oxide and the disadvantages yang paling utama sekali ni lah formation of toxic gases is poorly ventilated area ok so kita kena masuk, kita kena buat prepare for this experiment you need to take place in a hood and the marker finish must have a hood gonna be for proper ventilation so that's all for chapter 4C thank you